Good morning. It's time. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, coming up on today's show, we are talking exclusively with Kimberly Smedley. Do you remember the story that broke the federal investigation that took place into the illegal butt injection pyramid scheme? Well, guess what? Kimberly Smedley, she was found guilty of it, but she's here to tell her story and also talk about the new series coming up on BET Centric from the bottom up. We have the exclusive and I am excited about it. It's a whole new year, 2016. Great things are happening along the way, but you have to be excited about what's going to take place. And you have the claim that this year is going to be nothing but greatness and full of achievement and excitement. So we're going to talk to her a little bit, get the inside story. And guess what? In the 2016 year, we're going to continue to bring you the top level stuff, the best of the best. And I have some new things that are coming along the way. So your coffee cups are up, your pinkies are out. It's time to get lamped and you're going to get it. Good morning. <laughs> Here we go. Just for the you, smile and laugh, cause God loves you. Get up, you. get lamps, 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 lamps. The Jeffrey Lampkin. <laughs> Somebody turn the lamp on. Cannon and Graves is a proud sponsor of the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Located at 1837 Wilson Road in Newberry, Cannon and Graves has the perfect certified used car for you. Their extensive inventory has something in every price range, and they can get everyone financed, regardless of credit. All cars come with a warranty to give you the peace of mind you deserve. Come see Steve and Reggie, and find your new car at Cannon and Graves. Good morning. We're back here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, put your coffee cups down. This is an exclusive interview and one that you don't want to miss. Of course, I shared with you earlier in the show, we're talking with Kimberly Smedley. What happens when you are living life in the fast lane, great things are happening for you, and then some tragedy comes along the way that tumbles you and knocks you down. Sometimes love, it comes around, but it knocks you down. That's what they say. And I'm excited that Kimberly Smedley is in the studio on today. Good morning, my love. Hello, my How are dear. you this morning? I'm doing First great. First of all, you look absolutely amazing. Thank I'm you. loving it. Y'all, I just love her. I like I, I feel the vibe. Can yes. you feel it? Absolutely. Come on, it's in the room. Yes, it is. It's in, in the, the room. room. Yes, yes. ma'am. Come through. It is. How are you at this point in your life where, where you know you've dealt with so many different things? How is Kimberly on this Sunday morning? Well, Kimberly is doing well today. Wonderful. You know, I have no complaints. I feel like each day I get up, it's mm -hmm. a chance for me to do it right. You know? To do it right. Absolutely. That, has it always been that way for you? Because when we look at your life and we talk about it, okay, so you say that it's a chance for you to start over and mm -hmm. to, to do it right, but you've been living life for so many years and had the chance to do it right. Where did the point come at this time where you say it's a chance now to do it right? Well, um, let me just go back a little bit. Okay. Um, so, I will just say this. Mm -hmm. I came from a very good family. Okay. I mean, you know, a family of blue collar workers. Mm -hmm. I mean, my mom was a blue collar worker. Where were y'all raised at? In Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Okay. I'm a so Georgia Holly, peach. Okay, so you're a peach. She's a true peach, okay? I am a true peach. She started as the original peach, okay? Mm -hmm. Juicy, juicy. Like the juicy booty. Juicy, juicy. I <laughs> love it. Yes, ma'am. So my mom, um, you know, single parent. My father passed away when I was three years old, so I, I'm the only child and my mom raised me. But she did raise me with a set of morals and, you know, principles and mm -hmm. had a strong belief system in place. Um, she retired from General Motors. Okay. But I don't know. It's like when I hit the age of 21, I just, I don't know if it's because I chose to date men that had money. So along with the money came a lot of fast things. Okay. You know, and a lot of material things. So I would just say that from the age of 22 mm -hmm. until um, 
2011, mm -hmm. my life was spent hustling. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty so much what So it was like, however you got to get the dollar, you were going to do what needed to be done to get it. <laughs> Absolutely. So does that take us, because of course, and for all of you who are joining this morning, of course, we're with Kimberly Smedley. And um, of course, many of you know the story where Kimberly um, was found guilty yes. of... Um, and I'm going to put it in plain terms because I want everyone kind to understand it. Yeah, right. So they said that you were giving um, silicone butt injections. That is what, um, To yeah. a lot of celebrities. See, I'm loving you this morning because mm -hmm. I love the fact that you're able to just admit and mm -hmm. just say that, you know, hey, this is what I was doing. Mm -hmm. The ultimate question that I have, Kimberly, is how did we get there? If you were raised by your mother who was in, who was you know very grounded and yes. a blue collar worker and mm -hmm. she believed in working and then you got 21 and you meet these men and you wanted the fast um lane and hustling most people would maybe think about stripping um if not stripping maybe they would think about and i'm just thinking of of hustling That's, things in the city yeah. so if not stripping then maybe prostitution they would call that the fast money mm -hmm. how do we go from stripping and post prostitution to saying oh you know i'm not going to do that but I can give the ladies who really need it even more. Um, it, it really has been a journey for okay. me because I did not start at the age of 22 doing injections. Okay. I mean, I've done so many things that, you know, were illegal, but that has always been my thing. I mean, you know, I won't, I won't Are you at a comfortable ahead. place to talk about them? I, I mean, I won't give the full details, right, no. but anything from... Um, um, Fraud, okay. um, gambling. Right. And see, those are those are the normal. Those, right. That, and when I say normal, I, I share that because those are things that you hear about when people are trying to, you know, hustle or come yes. up. Fraud, you know, embezzlement, different Absolutely. things like that. Those what we call, I guess, white collar crimes. Absolutely. So, so we did those. Uh huh. Didn't and get caught. Didn't get caught, and I was so blessed to not have gotten caught. And okay. thank God the statute of limitations is up on a lot of those things, but. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you got that. Right? That's it. Yeah. That's it. Because yeah. Thank God for grace and mercy. Absolutely. You got to because because mm -hmm. you know what you did. And mm -hmm. let me share something with you because my viewers know that I always keep it real. Please don't sit on your couch and sit in That's judgment. Right. Because Absolutely. Because all of us have some things that we've dealt with. And if truth be told, we just weren't, the sheet wasn't yanked off of us. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about it, I love it because the truth is, is that, hey, you know what, Jeffrey? I was dealing with some things. Mm -hmm. I was doing some messy things. Mm -hmm. God covered me, even yes. in my mess, but I still kept going because I felt like the grace and mercy was going to be extended. Yes. But at mm -hmm. some point, the grace and mercy ran out. How did you get involved into the stripping world? Okay, so um, I did go to school. Mm -hmm. I ended up going to a technical school, okay. and I, I left Did that you graduate? I did okay. with a degree in cosmetology. Okay, so you're all about hair and fashion. I really okay. am. So with that being said, I was working in a salon with a, with, you know, there were so many different types of people, but I've always been attracted to the gay scene. Okay. So there was a guy there and he and I became very close. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until later on that I learned that he was actually doing the, the silicone injections. Okay. And so he was actually doing it himself. Mm -hmm. He okay. was. Was he, he doing clients. it on himself? Was he? He didn't do it on himself. Okay. But what he did, he had a lot of transgender clients, mm -hmm. celebrity clients. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of strippers. And here again, like he had been doing this since the late eighties. Wow. See, there was a time when transgenders could not go to a plastic surgeon right. like they do now right. and actually feel comfortable discussing mm -hmm. um, with a plastic surgeon getting. Uh, fat transfers. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, they weren't even doing Brazilian butt lifts at that time in the 80s. So this, this, this movement, this, you know, what we call the donk or yeah. the, the badonka donk or, you know, like the juicy booty and that, that movement, that did not start with the Kardashians. Oh, absolutely That did not, not start with no, J-Lo. No, no. That started back in the 80s? In the transgender community. Wow. It really did because they were trying to find a way 
to look more feminine. Okay. And they didn't have any resources, and so they ended up going into the black market, you know, the underground world mm -hmm. of the silicon injections. So this wasn't something that you were taught, um, this wasn't something that you came up with. Absolutely this is something not. that you observed, yes. you were in the world, and you became a part of it. Yes. When did you decide to go into the entrepreneur field and do it yourself? Oh, okay, so what happened is, this guy and I became very close, which, by the way, he has passed. Okay. So he actually got sick. He passed away. Okay. And his lover was like, listen, you're the only one that really... Because I used to travel with him. Okay. We would go to different cities, and he would perform the silicone injections, and I would be there with him. Mm -hmm. Because I knew after he finished making his coins, mm -hmm. you know, we were going to go and do some heavy-duty Hey, heavy honey, we to live it up. Yes. Like never before. And so, you know, he, he, was, he was a very good friend. Okay. But to make a long story short, when he passed away, his... Um, Lover approached me and asked me if I would be interested in taking over his business. Wow. This was in 1999. So, so this thing is set up for you yeah, already. It really you got was. the client, uh -huh. you got everybody you need. All you got to do is do what it is that he will sustain yeah. and keep bringing in, you know, the people. Uh -huh. And so we're at the crossroads because we got to go to break. Oh, this story is so, so invigorating. Is. We're, we're at the crossroads where you're now taking on this business mm -hmm. that really is almost like it was handed down. You have gained your inheritance into this world of, is, what do we call it, butt injections? That's, what, that's pretty into much the world, it is. the world of butt injections. The world of butt And you're doing it and for up to from 500, we're told, to $1,600 per injection. Per so session. when we come back, I want to know real quick what the session looks like, why your clients only paid cash, and where are we in this day? Okay. Are you really sorry for what has taken place? What is the path going forward? We're going to talk about it. Kimberly is here. I'm excited. It's happening. More is happening on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Your coffee cups are up. Your pinkies are out. You're getting lamped. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Jeffrey Lampkin. <laughs> Cannon and Graves is a proud sponsor of the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Located at 1837 Wilson Road in Newberry, Cannon and Graves has the perfect certified used car for you. Their extensive inventory has something in every price range, and they can get everyone financed, regardless of credit. All cars come with a warranty to give you the peace of mind you deserve. Come see Steve and Reggie, and find your new car at Cannon and Graves. Good morning. We're back here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, put your coffee cups down right now. My girl, Kimberly Smedley, is in the house. I'm loving it. Kim, first of all, let me tell you why I love you. You're real. You don't find people that are real these days. Listen, everybody wants to be a rendition uh -huh. of an original. But, baby, you need to be the original. I do And you haven't always been the original. You had to no. get to a place of being the original. So when we were talking before, of course, Kimberly um, was found guilty on... Um, doing illegal butt injections into clients, into patients. She graduated from school. She's highly educated. She knows her stuff, but she got involved in a world. Yes. And sometimes those circumstances and things, they lead you. So we come back, and your, your friend, rest in peace, passed away. Yes. You inherited his mm -hmm. business. And Kim, let me ask this. Reports say that you made almost um, a million and a half to two million dollars in this business? Uh, that it... was... They went back three years on me. So okay. that's what they said I made in three years. In three years. So before that, it could have possibly been even more. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. It, yeah, it could have been. And so... With that being said, I was just very blessed Th yeah. that they only very went much back so. three years. Why cash? Why, why do the clients pay cash? Well... I mean, you know, anytime you're doing anything that's black market, not, there you okay. go, okay. illegal, then the the best form of payment is always cash. And you would actually get? Would you be shocked at some of the people who wanted the oh, um, alterations of the, the injections? Yes. Okay. I mean, it was. Some people think that the silicone injections is really a black. Thing. Mm -hmm. It's really not. Okay. I mean, you have the Kardashians. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I've encountered. Chinese, Asian women, mm -hmm. excuse me, mm -hmm. Asian women, uh, you know, men, people that really just... Came men want me. the injections as well? Yes. Uh -huh. what, what you did say, okay, okay, that makes sense, mm -hmm. okay. So, so, Kim, 
Let me ask this. In, in my mind, you're making all of this money. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a point where you said, I'm going to get caught? Did you ever feel like, I'm going to get caught? Or was it that your friend did it so long and he didn't get caught, you never thought it could happen? Um, I think anytime you're doing anything illegal, mm -hmm. you have to deal with the fact that it's going to come to an end. Right. However, let me just say this. I didn't think my end would have been like it was. I always thought that what I was doing would, would have been a state case. Never at one time did I think It would be that federal. It would become federal. Do, do you think it became federal or they used you as a poster child because of the previous case? Because yours wasn't the first case. Let, no. me, let me share that. Her case was not the first case that actually came to light. Someone else was found guilty on it. I want to say it was in um, New Jersey or New York, somewhere up uh -huh. north. For killing. That, right, because the person actually died. Yes. And then it started. So how do you think, how did your story come to light? Okay, so I live in Atlanta, mm -hmm. we'll live in Georgia, and I would travel outside of the state okay. to actually perform the injection. Because they did call your ring an interstate ring, saying you were up and yes. down. Okay. And so that's what it became. It okay. became interstate commerce. So anytime you're crossing state lines to commit a crime, then that's when the feds get involved. So that's how it became a federal Were there case. amenities with your... Because, of course, yeah, they're paying you, but were you getting free concert tickets, um, the VIP accesses, things of that nature? Well, let me just say this about celebrities. Mm -hmm. uh, they are very interesting. Okay. Because here's the thing. For me, they were just clients. Okay. I mean, everybody that came through the door got the same treatment. I see I green. Treated, Okay, and mm -hmm. not only that, I would treat them, it didn't matter if it was a stripper, a working class woman, a stay-at-home mom, mm -hmm. wh whoever she was, celebrity, they all got treated the same. Mm -hmm. With that being said, the celebrities are just a little bit different because you, I would perform the injections on them and then I actually would go to an award show and they would see me and not acknowledge me. Wow, wow. So, no, there were no access to, you know, different events, no VIP um, passes, because they fear, did not want right, to be associated with the lady that did their budget. When it comes, when it came out, the story came out, everybody finds out that, oh my goodness, Kim is doing butt injections. She is, federal charges are coming forward. Mm -hmm. Were celebrities calling your phone to say, please don't rat me oh, out, what do yes. I need to do? Yes, I had a few celebrities that actually call to reach out to make sure that I would not say anything about them and also just to ask if I needed anything. But behind that, you knew there was a, right. I knew there was a motive. The and, moment of the arrest, mm -hmm. take us to it. Okay, so the guy that I dated, he mm -hmm. lived in D.C. Mm -hmm. um, the night of the arrest, I actually flown from Atlanta to D.C. Mm -hmm. to go spend time with him. Uh, we came back from dinner, I'm at the hotel, and there's a knock on the door. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, who could that be? So it was the FDA. My case is, was not DEA, not FBI, but it was the Food and Drug Administration, wow. okay? So uh, that was the first of it. And it's so, so sad because I later found out that the guy that I was dating was the one who helped to build a case against me. Wow. Yes. Wow. So, you know, they took me back to Baltimore, which is where the case originated right. from. And, you know, I was allowed to come back to Atlanta, and it's at that point, I'm going to tell you the truth. The I whole time I was going through it, mm -hmm. I was feeling like, oh, it's not that bad. You know, they didn't catch me doing the injections. You know, they're just here to arrest me. It can't be that bad. I think that reality, for me, did not set in until I actually walked onto the prison grounds, you Ooh. know? Mm. Yeah. So Do you I have children? I do. So I, you had to leave your children? I had to leave my kids, explain to them what I was doing and why I was having to go away. And it was a very difficult time. My, you know, I have a daughter that I adopted. Mm. Uh, you know, she's 13 now. Wow. So my boys are older, okay. you know, so it was, they were grown and it was a little bit mm. easier for them. Do you regret it, Kim? Well, do you, do you at this point? I mean, because I, I, I can't sit here and say sometimes when we're doing what we're doing that you you regret the lifestyle that you're living and what's going on. But 
Do you regret? I do, and I'm gonna tell you why. Okay. The regrets that I have come in on many different levels. Mm -hmm. Let me just say this. I actually received the injections myself. And what happened is I thought that it was helping me to feel better about myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I struggled with low self-esteem right. for so long. So every time I actually performed a procedure on a client, it made me feel like I was actually helping them. Helping right. them. I get it. Trust me, I get it. Absolutely. I get it. But who am I to have such grandiose, you know, behavior right. and just to feel like I'm qualified to perform a procedure? And I will tell you this, I believe that things happen for a reason. Uh -huh. I was stopped from doing it for a reason. No, I never killed anybody. No, no one was seriously injured with me performing the injections that I know of. But God but, said, let me pull back the sheet. Absolutely, but what then? if that had happened? Right. Because it's when I went to prison that I started to learn. It, when I went to prison, it's like I read about case after case after case where people were actually dying. <laughs> You know what God did? He stripped you yes. from all the things that were of the world mm -hmm. that you could be so involved and heavy in. And he said, I need to detox you of everything so you can see yourself. Because mm -hmm. when you're in it, you, can. you can't see it. But let me take you out, allow you to see yourself and see what is taking place. And what he did was he allowed in that period of maturation for you to grow. Yeah. to come out with the back side of the story, mm -hmm. to come to the place where you are right now, where you're back with your daughter mm -hmm. and your sons, and you have a new television show that is coming forward I from do. Queen Latifah and Nikki Gilbert that is going to, I, I, and viewers, I know that y'all really want to go more into the story. I, it's almost like I want to do a two-part because there's so much I want to talk. Go ahead. I just want to say this mm -hmm. about the book. Okay. So there's, there's so much that goes on in that book. Okay. It's not just a book that I said, well, let me just write a book. Mm -hmm. But I needed to tell my story mm -hmm. and to tell a story. So in that book, I do talk about the celebrities. I do talk about the process of the silicone injections. I give the history of Sarah Bartman, mm -hmm. um, who came from a tribe in Africa mm -hmm. and was actually exploited in England. Mm -hmm. So I give a lot of history. The book is just, it's a really good read. I mean, I promise you it's a page turner. Would you recommend butt injections to be done if they're done in the right way? Uh, there is not a right way. Okay. Because I heard that they can be up to $10,000 for butt injections. They can, but here's the thing. No one knows the long-term effect. And me, myself, because I was in doing the injections, mm -hmm. I know a lot of it sounds very contradictory, but I will tell you what I've encountered from my own experience. Okay, pause right there. This is what I want to do. Because here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make an executive decision. Producers, go with me real quick. I want to carry this show over into the next show because it's so groundbreaking and so revolutionary. However... You have a new show coming out I that do. I need to make sure we get all that information in okay, and then we're going to keep going with your story. Okay. Real quick, your show from the bottom up yes. is taking place. First of all, let's give some claps right okay. there because I'm excited so about it. Yes. From the bottom up, BET centric. Uh -huh. Queen Latifah, Nikki Gilbert. When is the first air date? Tell us a little bit about that real quick, as quick as you okay, can. Okay, so the first air date is January the 16th. Okay, that's a Saturday. That's on a Saturday okay. at 10 p.m. Okay, and there are some really interesting women on the show. So okay. it's myself along with four other women, and mm -hmm. each one of us have gone through something tragic in our lives. Living and we're the high life. And Absolutely. We have Crystal Wilson, yes. who was actually on Players Club. Yes, she's yes, yes. done a lot of um, different mm -hmm. things, you know, as far as acting is concerned. She's one of the cast members. Mm -hmm. She went through a situation back a long time ago at Freak Nick, where she actually shot someone. Wow. So, and then... So is this going to be a story? Is, 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 let me ask this, because I know what viewers... Is this going to be a reality show that is different from... How is this different from Real Housewives of Atlanta? Well, I'll tell you why it's so different is because you actually see us at our bottom. Ooh. Yes, when I say bottom, it's, it's bottom. I, ooh, I you know, wait. even when we were taping a year ago, I did not look how I look now. I was just home from prison after loss, losing everything.
thing. But here's the thing. There, then there's Christine Beatty, mm -hmm. who actually was the chief of staff in Detroit with Kwame. Kwame um, Kilpatrick. Absolutely, yes, who's yes, doing yes. 28 years Yes. Now. She was the chief of staff. So you see her not being able to get a job. Like, wow. you know, just being blackballed. Wow. So it's a really interesting st show. Then there's Sarah Stokes mm -hmm. from Making the Band. She's involved in um, domestic violence. Okay. You know, she went to prison for stabbing her husband. So everybody has a story, Everybody much. has a story. Okay. And it's really, really good. How many um, 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 episodes are we going to be looking at so far? Right now you're going to be looking at six, but... I need everyone to watch this show. Absolutely. I need everyone, it's... because you know what? We, we tune in so much to, to, to Trash mm -hmm. TV mm -hmm. and so many things that are of Trash TV, but we need to tune in to something like this yes. to see tragedy, to triumph, and Absolutely. to see where God has allowed you to come. So it's happening January 16th. Yes. So that's this Saturday coming. This Saturday, you need to... Remember, we need to have a viewing party. Somebody call me. <laughs> call me here. We have a viewing party. We might come somewhere. We'll come. Y'all ain't coming out. We, I, don't, I don't know. We're going to come somewhere. We have a viewing Eat some wings. I'm on this health kick now, so I've been eating some wings me and some, um, um, some different things. You know, just mm -hmm. trying to get healthy and live your best life that you can. That's so true. But it's happening January 16th, mm -hmm. six episodes, BET Century, yes. 10 p.m., and we're going to meet everyone, including my girl, Kimberly Smedley. That's we're going right. to talk some more. Okay. All I right? Would love to. And we're going to talk some more. Listen, keep it right here. I know that we're going to end the show for today, but. We're going to carry on next week. Kimberly's going to stay with me on the couch. We're going to talk some more because I really, your story is groundbreaking enough. People need to understand where God has brought you from. Okay. But those of you that are about to tune out today and where you're going right now, remember this. Because God is the greatest power, you shall not be defeated. Sometimes he has to allow the sheet to be pulled off of you when you're so deep in your mess. So in that way, he can allow you to dig yourself out of your mess. He lends you a helping hand, allows you to rise up. And as you're coming out, you'll truly come out with your hands up up saying, I am beautiful, fearfully, and wonderfully made. Come through, somebody. <laughs> Come through. More is happening on the Jeffrey Lampton Show. Your coffee cups are up. Your pinkies are out. You've been lamped. Good morning. Jeffrey Lampkin. <laughs> Cannon and Graves is a proud sponsor of the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Located at 1837 Wilson Road in Newberry, Cannon and Graves has the perfect certified used car for you. Their extensive inventory has something in every price range, and they can get everyone financed, regardless of credit. All cars come with a warranty to give you the peace of mind you deserve. Come see Steve and Reggie, and find your new car at Cannon and Graves. Wow, what an amazing, absolutely amazing show. Listen. Guys, I always share this. Everybody has a story. Everybody deals with situations. We are all human. However, at the end of the day, you've got to learn to live in your truth so that you can live your best life now. It is 2016. And so one of my things is that clean it up. Clean it up. Whatever it is that is messy in your house, and I'm not just talking about in your physical house, I'm talking about in your life, in your domain that you call whoever you are, Jennifer, Jack, um, Marlena, whoever, I'm calling all the characters from Days of Our Lives, but whoever it is that you are, clean it up. Begin to walk in newness. Begin to walk in a place of truth. Be truthful with who you are. If you feel like you're not liking the way you look, clean it up. If you don't like your job, clean it up. If you don't like your relationship, clean it up. Whatever it is that you need to do, you clean it up. Listen, more is happening next week. We continue an exclusive interview with Kimberly Smedley right here on The Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Your coffee cups are up, your pinkies are out, and you've been lamped. Good morning. Have a great week, everybody. <laughs> Just for you. Somebody turn the lamp on.